Good morning. We welcome all who are joining us from your home. We are so pleased that you are with us in spirit. We respectfully ask that all cell phones be silenced. Today we are celebrating the third Sunday of Advent. I am Dan Nolan, our second lector is Joseph Dembick, and our leader of song is Stephanie Dembick. The deacon of the Mass is Deacon Mace Mazzoni. Monsignor Michael McCormack is our principal celebrant. The Christmas giving tree gifts can be returned and placed around the Christmas trees until noontime today. We thank you very much for your generosity and for making this a very special Christmas for our brothers and sisters and their families. On Wednesday evening, December 14th at 7 p.m. in the Monsignor Woods Hall, parishioners are invited to our Adult Faith Formation Series. This year, our Advent series is focusing on Mary's unique role in building up the kingdom of God. All are most welcome. Next Sunday afternoon at 12.30 p.m., we will, will be decorating the church for Christmas. Much help will be needed. All are welcome. Come share the work and share the joy of the season. Also on next Sunday evening at 7 p.m. in the church, our parishioners are invited to join the community for Teze prayer. It will be a beautiful, peace-filled, reflective experience for everyone. The annual St. Charles Borromeo Seminary Appeal continues to be conducted. Donations can be sent directly to the seminary. Please see the parish bulletin for more information. This week's Pot of Gold Jackpot Prize is $5,000. Tickets are available in the vestibule of the church and also at the rectory. As we prepare for Mass, the prayer for priestly vocations can be found on the inside cover of the blue prayer book. Please stand and let us pray. Father, in your plan for salvation, you provide shepherds for your people. Fill your church with the spirit of courage and love Raise up worthy ministers for your altars and ardent but gentle servants of the gospel. Bless our archdiocese with numerous vocations to the sacred priesthood. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our entrance hymn is number 39, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 39.
Good morning, everyone. We welcome those who are joining us from their home. Always good to have you with us as we celebrate Mass. In addition to your own personal intentions for today's Mass, if we could especially remember Al Pillage, commending him to the Lord, and as we do so, we pray for his wife, Linda, who is here with us today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever, amen. At this time, we'll have the children's liturgy of the word invite children in grades kindergarten, first, second, and third grades. I'd like to come forward and go over to the chapel. My dear children, you will now go to hear God's word to reflect on the wonderful things God has done for us. We will await your return so together we can celebrate the Eucharist. Go now and listen to God's word.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon, they will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble, make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leak like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness, sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. 
Make firm your hearts, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight. The lame walk. Lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal places. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, 
is Gaudete Sunday. Rejoice in the Lord. When we hear these words and reflect on the scripture readings today, we begin to understand that St. John the Baptist remained focused on his message of repentance and hope in the Messiah's coming. Our many distractions can prevent us from experiencing the joy in the Lord. Whether we look for pleasures, gaining possessions, power, or prestige, our satisfaction and real joy can only be found in Jesus, not in the worldly attractions that are always temporal and fleeting. When we look at John the Baptist, a prophet whom Jesus loved and honored, he was not distracted. John did not have possessions, but rather he lived in the desert. His pleasure did not consist of delicacies, but rather John subsisted on a diet of locusts and honey. His commanding authority is not from the world, but rather from the word of God. In today's gospel passage, Jesus praises John. He calls him a prophet, and then he makes a very profound statement. This is the one about to whom it is written, behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Among those born of women, there is, has been none better than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. We might say to ourselves, how can anyone compare themselves to John the Baptist? We can't. God has a plan for each one of us. And in that way, we are all unique. Yet God's love is not a matter of degree. God loves each one of us the same. His love is complete and so necessary for our well-being. The joy that Isaiah refers to in our first reading is a reality when we experience Jesus in our lives and grow in our relationship with him. Jesus wants us to be an integral part of his plan as disciples in spreading the good news of the gospel, just like John the Baptist did when he lived on earth. We might ask ourselves another question. How can I do that? I am not a priest or deacon preaching God's word from a pulpit. However, we can spread God's word by acting in love toward others. When we interact with family, friends, coworkers, or even strangers, we can be the one to make a difference by our kindness and understanding toward them, by having patience to listen to them, and by giving them a good example to follow. This will please Jesus very much. And his grace in the sacraments will help us to bring joy to others and ourselves in preparing for the Christmas season. As we continue our liturgy, let us be reminded of this Sunday's theme, Gaudete. Rejoice in the Lord. In two weeks, we will be gathering with family and friends to celebrate the birth of Jesus. What a great time of year to begin anew, caring and loving one another and sharing the good news by our very lives.
Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, with praise to our God, who brings sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf, we now humbly offer our prayers. For Pope Francis, that God will bless him on his birthday, strengthen him in, in fulfilling his office, and guide him in leading the church to greater faith and discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government officials, that the Spirit will guide their work, help them to recognize the truth in all the issues before them, and open them to new ways of addressing the issues of immigration, poverty, and violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of reconciliation, that God will heal the wounds and divisions among families, co-workers, neighborhoods and nations so that we may work together to advance a greater good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessings on the members of our parish implementation team as they continue their work toward achieving the initiatives and goals of our pastoral plan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women called by the Lord to be priests deacons and consecrated religious, that the peace of Christ will guard their hearts and minds as they proclaim the good news of salvation to his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders, healthcare workers, and public servants who face burnout, that God will heal their exhaustion and restore their spirits in thanksgiving for all of our veterans who have sacrificed and served to keep our nation free. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing of our bodies, minds, attitudes, and spirits, that God will heal and make whole all the sick, wounded, and broken areas within us so that we may be more aware and fully of, of the instruments of God's love. Today, we especially pray for Betty Brooks, Kelly Coyne, Nicholas Corrado, Casey Eisenbray, Dennis Eisenbray, Brianne Gallagher, Mark Gravante, Jim Holstrom, William Hottenstein, George Kasparitis, Maureen Jones Kiefer, Joe Killian, Beth Ann Marciano, Nellie Marsula, Barbara Millery, John Monahan, 
John Pinky, Judy Pinky, Greg Scarborough, and Dave Yeager, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may live in the light of God's presence forever. And in particular, we pray for Stephen Barna, Trevor Fink, Daniel Zukozak, and Lydia Magni. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also commend to the Lord our pillage that he too be received into the kingdom and be at peace forever. Let us pray to the Lord. God of all goodness, hear our prayers as we await the coming of your Son, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 47, The King Shall Come When Morning Dawns, number 47.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands. The praise and glory of his name. Our good and good of all this holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what has, was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh. And so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal life. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Francis Cabrini, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Nelson our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion. O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We invite those who are participating with us from their home and therefore not able to physically receive Holy Communion to please join in praying the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, amen. Our communion hymn will be number 348, Spirit and Grace, number 348.
Spirit and Grace, number 348. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord, amen. As we conclude our liturgy, I thank you for your presence and for your participation. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.
Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 42, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, number 42.